shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our Bible study tonight. We thank you because we know that you want to impart your word and the power in that word to every heart tonight. And therefore, Lord, we pray our hearts will be open to your word tonight in Jesus' name. I will pray that your word enrich our lives and make us more useful in the church of the living God. Help us, Lord, that tonight this study, a practical study indeed, will be very suitable for every one of us as we look at the word and will do what you want us to do in Jesus' name. And then we pray that your power, your unction, your anointing will be upon every life. And we pray that you'll re enrich every life so that, Lord, our lives will be a blessing to all the people. In Jesus' name we pray. Tonight we come to our Bible study again and I praise the Lord for you have come. And it's wonderful to see those of you who are very faithful coming to study the word of God every time. I pray that the purpose of the study will be seen, revealed and fulfilled in your life in Jesus name. We're studying the greatest sermon that was ever preached in the Bible, in the whole world up till this time. In every generation. It was given by the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And it is called the Sermon on the Mount. You have that in Matthew chapter 5. Chapter 6 and chapter 7. We started from chapter 5, 9, when chapter 6. In chapter 6 we come to a section. It's a section on prayer and also fasting. We've dealt with the prayer. That he is the Lord's prayer, the disciples' prayer, the family prayer, the prayer for the church. And we have learned quite a lot of principles in those prayers. Now the Lord comes to another dimension. Something that accompanies prayer. Something that is associated with prayer. Something that when prayer and this thing when they are joined together, it makes prayer irresistible. Powerful mighty in its unction and function and its operation and it is a subject of fasting prayer and fasting we looked at the first part of the study last week and now this week we're looking at christ teaching on prayer and fasting open your bible with me to matthew chapter 6 matthew chapter 6 looking at verse 16 moreover when ye fast be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, certainly, I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Your prayer will be answered. Yeah. And your fasting will be rewarded in Jesus' name. Yeah. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 17 and join those two passages together. This Matthew chapter 17, there is something that happened. That it, a father had a problem child. And that child had epilepsy. It was a problem that had been there from birth. And Jesus with three of his disciples had gone to the Mount of Transfiguration. Has gone to the Mount of Transfiguration. And then there were nine disciples that he left behind. In the absence of the Lord Jesus Christ. This father brought the problem to the nine disciples. And these nine disciples tried their hands on the problem. They couldn't solve the problem. When Jesus came, the Father will not give up. Don't give up. The answer is on the way. And so the Father then brought this child to the Lord Jesus Christ and said, Lord, I brought my child to your disciples. And they could not heal him, deliver him. That's where some people stop. Some people will say, since I prayed once, and I've gone to other people, they have prayed for me. Maybe it's the will of God. For me to remain in the problem. But the father did not accept that. And so the father said. If you can do anything. Help us. Eventually I'm sure you know the story. Jesus cast out the devil. Mighty was the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
But the disciples had a good attitude. Disciple means learner. And these disciples, they wanted to learn. We must know the reason for the failure. We must know the reason why we could not cast the evil spirit out. Now Matthew chapter 7 verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart. There are some revelations you'll never have until you come to Jesus voluntarily by yourself. If you are only ready for the teaching that is compulsory, and then you say, I've given enough time, and I've listened enough, and what they have said is enough for me, yet there are some revelations you'll never have. But these disciples, of course, they had listened to Jesus many times. But now they saw something they could not do. They came apart to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then they said, why could not we cast him out? In your private life, in your private studies, you must be asking some personal questions from the Lord. Um, you must be patient enough for the Lord to give you the answer. You must be willing to see your shortcoming, your weakness. And you must be willing to see the reason for your failure. It says in verse 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your belief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and listen to these words, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. These are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. He has introduced us to fasting in Matthew chapter 6. And now he tells us the power, the authority that resides in the people that will make use of this great promise of God. And he says, nothing shall be impossible unto you. And then he says, how be it? In any case, this kind of stubborn evil spirit. This kind of mountain of a problem. This kind of great challenge. Goes not out but by prayer and fasting. As we look at fasting. Fasting is not new. Neither is it peculiar to the New Testament. It has, it has an abundant record in both the Old Testament and the New Testament. It has actually had a great and a long history that spans thousands of years. From the time of Moses to the time of Paul. From the time of the exodus of the children of Israel out of Egypt to the present day. Fasting have been part of the believer's communion with the almighty God. The record of God's word shows that many great intercessors in different dispensations have sought God's face with fasting, with prayer as well. Leaders, prophets, kings, queens, people, and even nations together. And cities like the city of Nineveh with their king. All these people together, they are prayed with earnestness, fervency, and fasting in times of great difficulty and danger. You think about people like Moses, or David, or Esther, or Ezra, or Nehemiah, or Daniel. Or Paul, uh, they are among the great intercessors in the Bible. And these people, they prayed and fasted, thereby expressing great supernatural breakthroughs for themselves and for others. You think about John the Baptist and his disciples. They fasted often. And what a great ministry John the Baptist had. What a life he lived. And what a ministry he manifested. And what impact he had on a corrupt and perverse nation. And Lord Jesus Christ began his ministry of fasting. Waiting on God without eating or drinking. And no one has equaled his influence or power on the world. You think about Paul the Apostle. He started his Christian journey and ministerial duty with prayer and fasting as well. The world is yet to see another man. The world is yet to see another preacher. The world is yet to see another Christian leader. Exactly like Paul the Apostle. You see, all these examples of prayer and fasting in the Bible, they show us that 
great things can happen if we will dedicate ourselves to prayer when the Lord leads us and the Lord leads us and then with fasting. And then great will be the opportunities we have in ministry. And great will be the effects that we have, the anointing, the power. And the authority that will manifest in the ways of the Lord. But you look at what Jesus said as he introduces us to this great important subject of fasting or prayer. He tells us, number one, a prayer should not be, a fasting should not be like the Pharisees. We should have a great purpose, a great intention, a great desire in our hearts. And that desire should lead us to do the right thing in the wrong way. I'm sure you understand. Doing the right thing in the wrong way will not yield the expected result. First, it's a good thing. And prayer is a good thing. But those Pharisees and those Sadducees and those Christ and those religious people of those days, they did the right thing in the wrong way. And there are many people like that today doing the right thing. They fast. And that's commendable. That's commendable. Uh, for any religious man to push all the food and the drink aside and wait on the Lord and fast, a great, great thing. The only pity for many of them and many of us perhaps is that we're doing the right thing in the wrong way. Look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites are. Of a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces. That they may appear unto men to fast. That's the problem. It's good to fast. Do it right. It's right to fast. Do it right. It, has, it carries a lot of spiritual power to fast. But do it the right way. And don't do it for sure. Don't do it to impress people. Don't do it to attract attention. And then he tells us. But thou when thou fastest and not thy head and wash thy face there's nothing to be gained by being dirty there's nothing to be gained by being untidy there's nothing to be gained by you know not observing the regular the normal hygiene wash yourself clean up wash your mouth and wash your face and present in each appearance so that you will not appear unto men to fast, but you appear unto, unto God, the Almighty God, your Father, who sees in secret that you are fasting. And then it says, Your Father, who seeth in secret, will reward you openly. He'll reward you. We're going to divide the study to three parts. Number one, scriptural pattern of personal prayer and fasting. That's a pattern, scriptural pattern of personal prayer and fasting number two supernatural power through purposeful prayer and fasting the supernatural power that comes through purposeful prayer and fasting number three surpassing possibilities significant possibilities of prevailing prayer of faith let's come to number one Personally, a scriptural pattern of personal prayer and fasting. I want you to look at verse 17. Matthew chapter 6, verse 17. But thou, when thou fastest, that what thou makes it personal. But thou, when thou fastest, this is a personal thing, this is a personal decision. It says in that verse 17, anoint thine head. That word thine, thine head, only one head. That means it's personal. This you and just you. And wash thy face. This you. This is not talking about corporate fasting. Yes, there's corporate fasting. That is when the whole church comes together. And the old church may say that they want to wait upon the Lord and pray and fast. But it's different. This is personal. What's the pattern then of personal prayer and fasting? Look at verse 18. That thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father. You'll see all those that will call them pronouns. Thy father, thy father, just your father, personal which is in secret, and thy father which saith in secret shall reward thee, personal, singular, reward thee openly. 
you will see that those same words are used for arms given if you look at verse 3 but that but when thou doest arms this personal it's not talking about church giving charity yes there are times that the whole church may decide to give charity but this is personal when thou doest thine arms let not thy left hand that's not the hand of the church it's your own hand no what thy right hand doest personal and then you look at verse 5 and when thou prayest the word thou is personal when thou Praised. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are personal. For that for the love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may appear unto men, or that, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet you'll see the language there is personal what we're emphasizing here is that it's not every time that you know first has a come like an announcement in the church there are times you just use your own voluntary will and then you make up your mind and you say you want to wait upon the lord you want to fast and when it comes to that personal time of praying and fasting there are some things you need to look at and there are some things you need to observe fasting has been a constant feature in the believers communion with god many men and women of god have fasted when they were burdened with some spiritual and physical problems our problems are different the challenges of life for you and me and for other people they're different at times when you are in the valley, other people on the mountain top. At times when you are having sorrow and deep, deep distress. Other people are in the mountain of joy and cheerfulness. And they don't have time, they don't have the need to fast and to pray at that time. But you, because of your peculiar position and your peculiar problem, at that time you need to wait upon the Lord. Fasting is not to be done to make a good impression upon people. It's because you have this challenge and this problem and this mountain. That's why you make up your mind personally that you want to wait upon the Lord at this time. You are not doing it to attract attention or to win the praise of men. You are driven by prevailing need in your life. Or you are led by the Spirit of God when you are confronted with overwhelming challenges of life. And then you are seeking the face of the Lord with prayer, with fasting. And then you are laying your petition before the Almighty God. For a fast to be beneficial, it must be done in a spirit of reverence towards God, respect towards God, honor towards God, humility before the Almighty God. We acknowledge our dependence upon the Lord and we worship Him as a covenant keeping Redeemer. In the strictest sense, when we're talking about fasting, it means we're doing it without food. That's what it has always meant. That you do without food and drink for a specified designated period of time. Times of fasting are special times of prayer. In times of personal distress when we humble ourselves before God as we seek divine intervention. You look at recorded examples of effective prayer and fasting in the scriptures. And what are you going to find? Let's look at them. Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1 We're looking at some recorded examples of praying and fasting in the Bible And here are some things we discover So that you will see when it comes your turn And you are praying and fasting waiting upon the Lord What you have to do The things that go along with the praying and the fasting The attitude, the dependence and the faith and the humility And the confession when necessary and the restitution when necessary in Nehemiah chapter 1. I'm reading to you from verse 4. And it came to pass when I had these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. You see, I had some information, and that information just blew his mind. That information just became a burden, a great weight upon him. And because of that information that he had, and then this a great burden came upon him, then he said, I sat down. I couldn't even continue. 
my normal work, my normal activity. And you know there are some times when people hear some kind of information from home or something has happened in a family. It weakens your mind. It weakens your nerves. It weakens your body. It weakens every part of you that even the, the light things you cannot carry. And you just have to sit down. You sit, it's not just ordinary sitting down. It's sitting down and thinking. It's sitting down meditating. It's sitting and going all over this information. How could this happen? Sitting and thinking, what am I going to do? Sitting and feeling this is terrible. Sitting and thinking the whole world has fallen upon me. It's at such a time. In that mode of mind, in that attitude, when that sorrow is so much, you're sitting and he said, I wept. This one is not a kind of hypocritical weeping. You know, sometimes a problem has happened. And somebody is just, you know, relating. You go to visit him or her. And she's trying to relate the problem to you. And tears are coming out. This one is it's like the fountain in the heart has been broken. And it means that, you know, the feeling, the, the sensation, everything within is spilling over. And while the person is talking about the problem, the fountain of tears and the fountain of sorrow broken out in the heart. And then it's weeping. You see, that does this thing. Why? We don't just say, I'm going to fast. Laughing, I'm fasting. Singing, I'm fasting. Cheerful, I'm fasting. Visiting people, I'm fasting. Joyful and fasting. No, there's a body. There's a problem. There's a mountain. And there's a great overwhelming challenge that makes a person to feel there's nothing else to do. In fact, even if you wanted to do any other thing, you could not because of the great burden and the great load and the great challenge. And therefore, he said, I sat down and I wept and I mourned certain days and you know some problems are come and then you're not able to shake it off in one hour you're not able to shake it off in one day sometimes you even lose appetite even if you wanted to eat you cannot and that's what you are talking about that's what brings the praying and the fasting in a personal way and then he said i'm fasted and prayed it's not just fasting it's not hunger strike you know this is not just okay i'm not going to eat this is prayer with fasting. Fasting with prayer before the God of heaven. Now, what did he do? When he said, I fasted and I prayed. And what are the components of that fasting? What are the components of that prayer? Look at verse 5. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God, that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant which I pray before thee now day and night for the children of Israel thy servants and confess the sins of the children of Israel. Confession went along with the praying and the fasting. You know, at the time of fasting, there's personal examination. What have I done to bring all this upon myself? Maybe it's not just a, a, a devil. We, we know the devil is bad, but I'm not the only one in the world. Why should the devil run after me and put all this pressure and all this problem and all this mountain to crush my life? Why is this happening to my family? I'm not the only one that has children in this community. Why is it happening to me and not happening to others? Then you examine yourself. And with that self-examination, if the Lord reveals anything, or the confession comes, the repentance and the restitution. Oh Lord, I'm sorry about that. I just say, I wasn't very careful and very thoughtful. I wasn't thinking about my life. I became so self-confident, overconfident. I wasn't looking in the right direction. That's why the pitfall just got me. I'm sorry about that. There will be repentance. And then if there's need for restitution, restoration, yes, that will be done. Restitution too. And then it goes on and it says, it says in that, the latter part of that verse says, which we have seen against thee, both I and my father's house have sinned. And you know, Nehemiah just examined himself and he said, This is terrible. And because this is terrible, I want to come out of this. I want the Lord to give me solution to this problem. Because of that, there's confession. 
And these are the things that make personal prayer and fasting very, very effective and very, very powerful. It says in verse 7, we have dealt very corruptly against thee and have not kept the command, thy commandments and, thy, and not the statutes, nor the judgments which thou commandest thy servant Moses. Remember, I prayed thee the word that thou commandest thy servant Moses, that saying, if ye transgress, I will scatter you abroad among the nations, said Lord, we're seeing your hand, we're seeing the fulfillment of your word. The promises of God, the word of God has two edges. One edge positive, the other edge negative. We have not done right. Therefore, the negative edge of the world has taken effect in our lives. This is because of our own sin, our own fault, our own shortcoming, our own weakness, our own sincerity, our own hypocrisy, our own going astray. This is why all this is coming upon us. Because you have said, if you do not keep my commandment and my word, I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Then in verse 9, but, he, but if ye... Turn unto me and keep my commandments and do them. Though there were of you cast out unto the utmost part of the heaven, yet I will gather them from the place that I have chosen. Unto the place I have chosen and search my name there. But Lord, remember the other edge of the sword, the other edge of the word. You said, if we return. If we repent, if we call upon you, that you will gather us again and bring us back. You understand now, personal fasting? In your personal fasting, you go back to the word of God. You look at the promises of God. You look at where you've gone wrong, and then you repent, you make restitution, and then you're willing to offer obedience and absolute dependence upon God, and your prayers will be answered. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 36 in Jeremiah chapter 36, verses 6 and 7. Therefore go thou and read in the roll which thou hast written from my mouth. The roll which thou hast written from my mouth. The words of the Lord in the ears of the people in the Lord's house upon the fasting day. Read from the word of God upon the fasting day. You see, there are people that fast and they don't treat the word of God at all. They don't examine the word of God and see the warnings of the word, the commandments of the word, the promises of the word, and the favor, the mercy, the grace that the Lord has said he will show. And it is a kind of empty fasting, dry fasting, dry in the sense there's no food, dry in the sense there's no word, there's no spiritual food as well. And everything is so dry and there's confusion at the time of the fasting. And then when they say they want to pray, you know, at the end of the fasting, maybe that the end of the day, there's confusion in their mind. There's no promise of God that the Spirit of God is laying upon them saying, stand on this one. Standing on the promises of God, I cannot fail. When the howling storms of life avail or prevail, then you know you are going to be able to get through that problem because you have the word. We're told here that, you know, in the day of fasting that Jeremiah was to go. And then he was to read this word coming from the mouth of the Lord. And also thou shalt read them in the ears of all Judah that come out of their cities. It may be that... It may be they will present their supplication before the Lord and will return everyone from his evil way. When you hear the word of God and you return from your evil way. And now here is where you need to become wise, my brother, my sister. If you have a great problem, if you have a serious problem, and this problem is so great to lead you to fasting and to praying. And then the Lord shows you a little sin, shows you something to do. And then you have to repent of that sin and to make restitution. Sometimes some people, they shake their heads and say, no, I'm not ready for that now. God just answer my prayer. Why wouldn't you just do a little sin so God will give you this mighty sin? What are you going to do like Naaman? That he had leprosy covering all over his body. And then he came to the man of God. And the man of God said a little thing, a simple thing. Go deep yourself in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come back again. And then he became angry. 
Why are you angry? Didn't you come to the prophet so that solution will be given to your problem? Didn't you come to Elisha so that you'll have solution to this great problem that is bringing national shame upon you? And we're fasting when we fast so that this national shame, this shame, public shame that we have, that God will take it away. And if we are so interested that God will take that shame away, why don't you do this little thing that the Lord is asking you? You know, there are people that will not even do that little thing, but the servants of Naaman came and they said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do something greater, wouldn't you have done it? How much more when he said, Just go dip yourself in Jordan seven times and your flesh will come again? Why don't you do this little thing so you can have a great sin? Be like Abimelech. Abimelech had taken Sarah. And then the, the Lord shut up the wounds of everybody in the home, in the house of Abimelech. And then God said, Abimelech restored the man his wife. And then uh, he woke up in the morning. Remember now the great uh, barrenness that came upon the whole family. And just because of Sarah. And the Lord said, return that woman to her husband. And then all the barrenness will be gone. Amalek was very wise. He did what the Lord wanted him to do. And then Abraham prayed for him. And then the barrenness went away. Let's do what the Lord wants us to do. Great blessings are coming on your way. In Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 9 rather Daniel chapter 9 verse 3 And I set my face unto the Lord God To seek by prayer and supplication With fasting and sackcloth and ashes Again we find another man here I set my face unto the Lord God Personal He said I'm concerned about the nation of Israel We ought to be the head and now we're even worse than the tail. And the uh, Babylonian government and the Syrians and all the all these other people, the Greece and everybody, they, they're trampling over us. This should not be. Or they've spent 70 years already in the captivity. And Daniel became concerned. Are you not concerned? What's happening in your family? Are you not concerned the premature death taking place there? Are you not concerned the cause and the yoke and the body and the mountain? Are you not concerned the barrenness there? Are you not concerned all those uh, problems there? This one is out of school and you know it's God's okay, but there's no job. It's like you know the whole problems of the whole nation is upon that single family. Are you not concerned like Daniel? And then he said, I set my face unto the Lord God. To seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession. And said, O Lord, a great and dreadful God, keeping the covenant and mercy to them that love him, to them and to them that keep his commandments, we have sinned. You see the confession right there again. God will answer our prayers. We're looking at Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. Here is Paul the Apostle. He was Saul. He just met the Lord in the way. And then as he met the Lord in the way, the Lord now said, go to Damascus. It will be showing you what she will do. Then uh, Acts of the Apostles chapter 9. We're looking at verse 8. And Saul arose from the earth. And went, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into unto Damascus and was there three days without sight neither did he eat and drink nor drink uh, can you see what happened here Saul he met the Lord on the way the Lord had forgiven him of course and then the Lord was calling him into the ministry what a great challenge from a persecutor to a preacher from an injurious person to an instructor of the word of God. What a great challenge. How can I do that? I've been opposing Christ. I've been saying that all the followers of Christ were wrong. And now I'm to take this gospel and preach this gospel. And for the rest of my life, this is what I'm going to do. Who is sufficient for these things? He felt the burden of that ministry. He felt the load of that calling. And he felt the impossibility of that commission. Because of that, he prayed. 
and then God sent uh, Anas to him. You know the story, I'm sure. And eventually Anas came and said, Brother Saul, the Lord will appear to you in the way. He has sent me to lay hands on you. And then he received the sight and received the Holy Ghost. He was throwing the inch. And if we are going to do something today, we know that we are not sufficient for it. The great ministry, the Lord is calling us to, that will take the gospel to different parts of the world. And when that commission, when that call comes upon your life, you'll feel the burden, you'll feel your insufficiency, you'll feel your weakness, you'll feel your ignorance, and then you wait upon the Lord. This is what these people did, and God honored their sincerity. And God honored their dedication, their fasting, and their prayer. And I'm sure our God has not changed. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we will do the same thing today, the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Point number two. Supernatural power through purposeful prayer and fasting. For purposeful prayer and fasting. Now that word purposeful is very important. Hey, you don't just you don't just fast. And of course, you, you need to understand the, the burden that you have. And you ought to understand the reason why you want to fast. And you want to know that your fasting is scriptural. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 17, verse 19. Matthew chapter 17, verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? Maybe you don't understand the full import or the full implication of that question. The reason why they came to ask the Lord this question is, please turn your Bible to Matthew chapter 10. In Matthew chapter 10, we're looking at verse 1. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out. And to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He had given them the power in chapter 10. And they had gone out one uh, two by two. And they went out and they were successful. They met no failure. But now a sick a child, a demonized child, an afflicted child, an epileptic child was brought unto them. And when they went out two by two, they succeeded. And demons were cast out. And the sick were healed. And they preached the gospel to many people. And many people came to the Lord. Now at this time, they were not two, they were nine. Because three, James, Peter, and John, had gone with Christ to the Mount of Transfiguration, remaining nine behind. All the nine could not cast out the devil. And then they were surprised. We have never experienced a failure like this before. Because this is not our first time of solving such a problem like this. Why couldn't we do this? They were told, and Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. And you look up here for a moment. You know, sometimes as, uh, as children of God, as students, we need to, we need to learn. If you've been a student before, many of us have been students. You went to school. When you finish your final exam, before that final exam, you read, you prepared yourself. And then at the end of, when you wrote that exam, that was great. And then you had a great, great uh, kind of success. And it was, uh, you know, like you had distinction. Now, you stop reading, at least temporarily at that time. Because exam is over. And because the exam is over, what am I reading for? Now you relax. Thank God my exam is now over. And then you've had your results. And all you do now is read a newspaper and just, you know, just have a nice time. Now, if you were called two months after that exam to write that same exam, you'll not be able to make it. The reason is because for these two months now, you stopped reading. You stopped preparing yourself. You stopped searching. That's what happened to the disciples. In chapter 10, they were successful. 
And now from chapter 10, after they came back from that missionary trip, well, there was nothing again. Now they were just following Christ and Christ was doing everything now, casting out the devils and healing the sick and preaching the word. And they were just following the Lord Jesus Christ. Between chapter 10 and chapter 17, something had happened to them. And they wouldn't have known if this test did not come. They wouldn't have known if this challenge did not come. Are you looking at your life when you are much younger as a Christian? And at that time, you just devoured the Bible, read the Bible, studied the Bible, memorized the Bible, swallowed the Bible, literally. And at that time, when you prayed, you know, the answer came immediately. And then I became a Christian for, you know, some time now. And uh, now persecution is over. The, nobody is persecuting you like they used to persecute you. And nobody is running after you like they used to run after you. And nobody is criticizing and then asking some embarrassing questions, trying to make you backslide. Now, now you relax. And when a challenge comes now and you pray, you wonder why is God not answering? Because you remember that years gone by when you were a new Christian. And the fire was burning. And the anointing was mighty. These problems that are happening now that you know you are struggling with. If it were those years, in a, in a very few days, you we'll solve those problems. That's what happened to them. That's why they now came to us and they said, Jesus, Lord, Master, why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief. Unbelief had taken place of faith. For verily I say unto you. For certainly I say unto you, that if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. I want you to think about that now, in your life. The things that face you, the future that you have the great possibilities in your life what this life single life could become what you could achieve if you just woke up to the realization nothing shall be impossible unto you all the problems that stare you in the face all the mountains that challenge you and the things that make you tremble and the things that make you get discouraged and the things that so much challenge you that you know your life your time your thoughts they're taking up with about this about this about this the tears the sorrow the suffering the joblessness the poverty the shame and now God is telling us through Christ Jesus, his only begotten son, is saying, do you know you can get to the place in your life where literally nothing shall be impossible unto you? Do you know you can get to the mountain top? And do you know that you can overcome all these things? And you can come to that place where literally nothing shall be impossible unto you? And the answer is yes. And then you ask, how can that be? Then Jesus said in verse 21, How be it this kind? Goeth not out by my prayer and fasting. This kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. Now disciples, uh, we need to think together here now. And we need to bring your weight, bring your balance. On this side, you have the scale. On this other side, you have another scale. Let's put the balances together. On this side, you have miracle, you have power, you have anointing, you have authority, you have casting out devils, you have the gifts of the spirit. On this side, you have prayer and fasting. Which one is greater? Can you deny yourself of food and drink for such a short time? And then get all these great, great, great things. That's what the Lord was saying. He's saying nothing goes for nothing. He's saying uh, you cannot have gain without pain. 
It's saying that if you're going to have all these great things and the possibilities and the power of faith and the possibilities in Christ and in God, it goes not out but by prayer and fasting. Can you deny yourself of one day, two days, three days of food so as to have three years and ten years of victory? Can you deny yourself of one day of food and wait upon the Lord so as to overcome this running lion that is one going about with you? Hearing voices from behind, hearing voices from within, and all this harassment of the devil. Wait together and see if you are going to have this power and you are going to have this victory. Can you pay this little price? Can you deny yourself? Because this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. And the Lord was telling all of them. It wasn't only Peter or James or John. He was telling every one of them. You can deny yourself. And then you can have great breakthrough. It's coming your way. And then as you look at that, you find out, look at the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Man, in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, we're looking at it from verse 1 and verse 2. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when he was, when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And that's all right. Forty days of fasting that Jesus, by the way, that's special. By the way, that is, that's not a common thing. I don't find everybody fasting forty days, even in the Bible. Not even Paul. In the case of Paul, just three days. And then after that, when he became now a minister, he fasted, you know, once in a while. Not 40 days, you don't treat that uh, very often. But Moses, one, Elijah, very special because the angel gave him the food. And then he went in the strains of that food, 40 days. And then you have the Lord Jesus Christ. And without any special moving and any leading of the speech, you cannot just say, I'm going to fast for 40 days. One day, two days, uh, three days, and you know, before you even finish it, uh, two, three days, uh, the answer will come. Yeah. I said the answer will come. Yeah. You know, our God is not is our God is not a tyrant. Our God is not is not just a master, it's our father. He doesn't want us to fast and become a skeleton before our problems are solved. He wants to just say, I'm going to wait upon the Lord, and the Lord sees your desire and he sees what you want. Before you go two or three days, I believe miracle will happen. But in the case of Jesus Christ, we're told he fasted. And these 40 days, and then look at verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. He had fasted and then, although he had the Holy Spirit coming upon him like the, the, the appearance of a dove before. But now it says he came in the power of the Spirit. In verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. This after the fasting, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, and to and to preach deliverance, uh, to proclaim deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. After the fasting, that's what happened. And then he says in verse twenty-one, and it's, and they began, and he began to say unto them. This day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. We're told in verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. Power is coming upon your life. And you know, if we're going to have this kind of power, this kind of authority, the Lord is saying we need to wait upon him. As we look at what we have, we have power. What kind of power? Number one. That is the power to prevail with God on men. In Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32. The power will receive while you wait upon the Lord. Genesis chapter 32. We're looking at it in verse, uh, in verse 28. Verse 28 tells us. And it said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob. 
But Israel, for as a prince, has thou power with God and with men, and thou hast prevailed. Prevailing power. The fasting and the prayer makes us to be able to have this kind of power. You know that Jesus was after Jacob. Jesus said, I'll get him. He still had this hatred against Jacob, even after 20 years of not seeing one another. And when Jacob sent messengers to uh, Esau to say, your brother is coming, he said, go back and tell him that I'm coming to him. I'm going to fight him with 400 men. That's why I waited upon the Lord. And when he waited upon the Lord, the power came in his life. And he prevailed upon the enemy that when they met in the following chapter, there was no fighting anymore but fellowship. Number two, power to do exploits in difficult and dangerous times. When you fast and pray, and you wait upon the Lord, and the Lord honors that commitment, that consecration, that dedication. Here is what's going to happen. The power that makes you to do exploits in difficult times, in dangerous times. In uh, Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. Daniel 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. That's a dangerous time, a terrible time. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. The people that do know their God, they'll be strong and they will do exploits. And so then, if we wait upon the Lord, we have power with God. Number three, power to remove obstacles and to move mountains do you know that every mountain in your life can move away every mountain every mountain so that you'll be released to do the work of god you'll be released to think on positive things and you know if we're always thinking about mountain always crying about mountain always feeling this challenge is too much how can I go through life like this? And our life is just revolving around the problems we have and the mountains we have. We do not have the freedom, the liberty, the release to think about any other thing. Because we are thinking and talking about problems every time. But when you wait upon the Lord and the Lord gives you this kind of power that comes through the prayer and the fasting. Then the power comes in your life. Obstacles are moved away and mountains are moved away. Matthew chapter 17 again. In verse 20, it says, and Jesus said unto them, and the Lord is telling, telling you tonight, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, ye shall say unto this mountain, you know what, before the fasting and the prayer, we are talking to other people about our problems. We say unto people about the mountain. But when you pray and fast and you wait upon the Lord, suddenly you realize there's no point talking to people about my mountain. I need to talk to the mountain itself. There's no point going about grumbling and murmuring and complaining about my mountain. I need to talk to the mountain myself. There's no point. You see, the, the, the fasting and the prayer will open your eyes, will make you to see the anointing, the unction, the power, the authority you have. And at the mountain, the mountain should not be so much, it shouldn't be magnifying the mountain, even talking about that mountain, about the sickness, and about Satan, and about demons, and about enemies. You are now above that mountain. Now you say to the mountain, Remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove. I said it shall remove yeah. and nothing shall be impossible unto you. But remember now, how be this kind goes not out or by prayer and fasting. Number four, we have power over all the power of the enemy. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power as you wait upon the Lord. You've got power before, but now it says this is extra. This is going to be extraordinary. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. How many times have, you know, some people complain, I don't know why. I see scorpions everywhere. I see serpents everywhere. I don't know why I feel they're walking all over my body. Why don't you just wait upon the Lord? And wait upon the Lord. And those things will get out of your life, out of your family, out of your body. In Jesus' name. And you will tread on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. 
whether in the dream or in the daytime. Whether you are with people or you are all alone. Whether it's in the night, in the dark, or it is in the light. Anywhere you are, it says nothing shall by any means hurt you. How many times we just cheat ourselves and we eat and eat until we're weak. And we eat and eat until we become gluttons. When, if you just deny yourself a little and wait upon the Lord and push the plates aside just for a day or two days or three days and just wait upon the Lord. Except you have ulcer. If you have ulcer, you have to be very careful so that you don't uh, say, well, I want to fast and then you kill yourself because also patients, also people, uh, you know, you need food and therefore you need to be very wise. There's another side you can develop if you're not able to fast. I'll talk about that later. But if there is no ulcer and there's no small problem, then you, you wait upon the Lord and within a day or two, I'm telling you, you know, the devil running after you before you run after them. You chase them like David chased Goliath and all the followers of Goliath and say, where are they? They will all be gone. Yeah. And then he'll give you power over all the power of the enemy. And as I look at you, I say that power is coming already. Yeah. Number five is power over the persecutors and oppressors. You know your persecutors, you have a power over them. All those oppressors, you have power over them. And then number six says, part to heal sicknesses. There will be no sickness on your body. Yeah. Well, I, we don't have enough time, but you know, sometimes fasting, uh, or prayer, even without much prayer, you ought to pray, you ought to pray, but even without much prayer, fasting, it has a way of purging your whole system and purging your body. That when you fast and you pray and you wait upon the Lord, and you know, sometimes you give your body, you give it too much a kind of weight and too, a too much kind of load and too much kind of work to do. You know that when you eat, all these other organs of the body, they go to work. And you give them vacation at the time you are fasting so that your system is purified. And then you are drinking water. You ought to drink water a lot if you are going to go beyond you know, a few days. And then when you drink that water, your whole system is purified. You become light. And many of those uh, sicknesses uh, disturbing the cells of your body, they are gone. You know, and it clears your brain and clears your mind and clears your body. And then you talk about sickness. Never. I said never. Then not only that you are now well, now you are able to take that wellness, that health, you are able to impart it onto other people. And then another thing is that evil spirits and demons, they will see you and recognize, they say, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know. And then before you even open your mouth, they will be running away. And part to declare and welcome truth to all categories of sinners. There will be no fear in you. You'll be able to declare the word of God. There's part to convict and convert adding sinners. And part to work miracles and accomplish the impossible. Part to subdue and to conquer the sorcerers and the possessors of power of the power of darkness. You'll not complain about witches and wizards anymore. In fact, those people, when they see you, they'll see an unction, an anointing, a power upon you. They know, they know. They, they can see that sign upon you. Before you get to them, they will run away. Yeah. Acts chapter 13. Acts chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 1. Now, there were in the church. This is talking about uh, the church at Antioch. There were in the church. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon. And then he goes on giving us the name in verse 2. And as the minister to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, to the work whereunto I have called them. Eventually they were sent out. Verse 3 And when they had fasted and prayed, and laid their hands on them they sent them away now in verse 6 and when they had gone through the isle of Paphos and they found a certain sorcerer a, a false prophet a Jew whose name was by Jesus which 
was, was the deputy of uh, the deputy of the country, such as Paulus, a prudent man who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimas the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, was to them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. A sorcerer was to them. Maybe sometimes uh, there are some sorcerers, some witches, and some wizards, occultic people, and they try to withstand you. And they, they know that yours is the progress, because the promise of God for you is that you'll be the head and you will not be the tail. And then they want to withstand you and cancel the promise of God from being fulfilled in your life. After this night, we overcome them. Then it says, then Paul who, who also is called then Saul who also is called Paul filled with the Holy Ghost set his eyes on him and said O fool of all subtlety and all mischief thou child of the devil thou enemy of all righteousness will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord and now behold the hand of the Lord is upon thee and thou shalt be blind not seeing the sun for a moment for a season and immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand then the deputy when he saw what was done believed being astonished at the doctrine of the lord that's power that power is coming upon you when you have that kind of power, nothing shall be impossible. And those sorcerers, they'll be afraid of you in Jesus' name. Now we come to the third point, surpassing possibilities through prevailing prayer of faith. As we wait upon the Lord, we need to realize that we also need to manifest faith. It's not just that, you know, we pray and fast and then we, our, our hearts are filled with doubt. We don't believe. Thinking, well, God still answer my prayer. Remember, Jesus said this because of your unbelief. You couldn't do that. And when you wait upon the Lord, it's to clear that unbelief. It's so that now your faith is sharpened. And your faith is increased. And your faith is mighty and powerful. That's what the Lord is saying. That we shall have faith in God. In Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. I'm going to read from verse 22. Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For very lesson to you that whosoever shall say, Remember that word, whosoever. Who is the whosoever? It's you now. I said it's you. And as you go back home, this power is following you. This authority and anointing is following you. Whosoever whosoever I shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he says whatever you say tonight you'll have whatsoever you say Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. Yeah. Faith in God makes believers mightier, makes believers more powerful than natural people. God's promises provide for all our needs and all your needs will be supplied by God in Christ Jesus. All that God has promised the believer in his word can be received by an act of faith. This is true concerning our salvation, say by grace through faith, concerning our healing and our deliverance, the provision of material requirement or whatsoever our particular needs and problems might be. By faith we are justified. By faith we are sanctified. By faith we are filled and baptized in the Holy Ghost. By faith we are kept and preserved. By faith we stand and we walk by faith. We inherit the promises by faith. The central importance of faith in the life of the child of God is clearly revealed in the watch of God. Maybe you understand the Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe. Tonight as you come to the Lord, you believe must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him you are seeking the lord tonight and the lord is answering your prayer in john chapter 12 
John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse, John chapter 14, rather. John chapter 14, verse 12. Very late, very late unto you. He that believeth on me. Who are those people? That's you. The Lord is speaking to you. Don't compare yourself with the people of the world. You are a believer, you are not a doubter. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do. That time has now come. Weakness is gone. Complaining is gone. Yeah. Oppression of the devil is gone. Yeah. He that believeth on me, the works I do, he shall do. And greater works than this shall he do, because I go unto my Father. In Mark chapter 9, Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, If thou canst believe, All things, are possible to him that believeth. All things are possible for you. Yeah. Forget the past. A new day has come. Yeah. A day of power. Yeah. A day of authority. Yeah. A day of anointing. Yeah. Wait on the Lord and you'll see the power will flow through your life in Jesus' name. Yeah. In uh, Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. I'm reading from verse 28. As thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. If uh, your problem, your mountain, the challenges of your life are making you to faint tonight, power will be given to you. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That's why you are waiting upon the Lord. That's why I will fast and pray. So that we can renew our strength. And they shall mount up with wings as eagles. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. God has given us tonight revelation. The kind of revelation that will take weakness out of our lives. That will take impossibilities away from our families. That will take problems away from our lives. That literally every problem of our lives will be solved. And the Lord has given us an answer to that question. Why couldn't we cast him out? And the Lord has said, us, said to us tonight, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it this kind? Goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And we're telling the Lord, if that's what, what it will take, we'll give whatever, whatever it will take. If it will take prayer and fasting with faith, that all these mountains will move away, yes, that's what we'll do. We're going to wait upon the Lord and this week alone, all over in our church, mountains are moving away. Problems are getting solved. The Lord has given us a secret. We have the secret, we're not going to lose it. All powers of darkness will bow away from your families. Let us rise up and begin to do it right now. Do it right now. You are facing God. With God all things are possible. You are a child of God. He has given you a lot of promises. And those promises, they bring possibilities into your life. Power into your life. Authority into your life. If you have failed in the past, don't worry about that. That's gone. If you have been crushed by mountains in the past, don't worry about that. All that is gone. If the devil and the demons and the evil spirits and the enemies and the wicked people of the world in the past, if they have been running after you and you have been complaining, murmuring, that's gone. Not should you anymore. A day of authority, a day of power, a day of anointing, a day of breaking yoke, a day of removing mountains has come. Because the Lord has said now, nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. Nothing shall be impossible unto you. What a great privilege you have tonight. What great authority you have tonight. Not just a grain of mustard seed. And those problems are gone. Just a grain of mustard seed. And those evil things are gone. Sorcerers will not have any authority over you. Witches will not have any authority over you. Powers of darkness will not have any authority over you. 
demons will not have any authority over you evil spirit familiar spirit unclean spirit will not have any authority over you all the weaknesses of the past they are gone wait upon the lord and renew your strength they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up to wings as eagles they run they'll not be weary and they'll, they'll walk and they will not fade have you not heard have you not known the everlasting god is never weary and there's any searching to his understanding he give a part to the faith even the young and the youth they shall fail and they shall falter but they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength the power of the lord is available for you all these mountains will go all these problems will be solved all these challenges will be taken away mountains will move away barrenness will move away courses will be broken yokes will be broken families will be reunited all our wayward children will be recalled they'll come back to their senses a failure will turn to success a defeat will turn to uh, conquering and then all the poverty will turn to prosperity the lord is on our side and the lord himself has said whatever you ask in prayer believe me you will receive jesus said it that believeth on me the works i do you shall do and greater works than you shall do because i go to the father that promise is yours that promise is yours power is available for you great possibilities available for you and the lord is saying call upon me call upon me call upon me and i'll show you great and mighty things that you have never known that's what the Lord is saying is available for you. He can give it to you right now. Just believe. Just believe. If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. If you can only believe. If you can only believe. All things are possible. All things are possible to him that believes. Healing that's available. Deliverance that's available. Salvation of your loved ones that's available sanctification purity holiness in your church that's available provision that's available the fulfillment of promises that's available the conquering of enemies that's available casting out of demons and devils that's available deliverance from all the afflictions that's available that's available if you will just call upon the lord if thou canst only believe all things are possible to them that believe all things are possible to them that believe if any of you lack wisdom let them come unto god and ask him faith believing not wavering for he that wavering is like the wave of the sea tossed to and fro let that not man let not that man seek he shall receive anything from the lord but the prayer of faith that shall save the sick you remember elijah he prayed and there was no rain for three and a half years he prayed again and then the rain came rain came a year of men love like passions like them and if that is so in those days it is much more so today available available you can call upon the lord and god say yes i will answer the holy ghost will overshadow you and the power of the highest will come upon you and so wait upon the lord and you'll say yes lord i'm waiting upon you this mountain must not remain the sickness must not remain and this demonic oppression must not remain you're a mighty god and you're a great god and you will not fail your promises are yes and amen in christ and then god says i'll supply your need according to my riches in glory by christ jesus you call upon the lord wait on the lord wait upon the lord the power of praying and fasting the authority the unction the anointing that comes as a result of praying and fasting as you wait upon the lord as you wait upon the lord as you wait upon the lord reading the word studying the word meditating upon the word accepting the word holding on to the promises of the lord that's what he says he will do and he says i'm god i change not he says i'm god i change not the power of god through moses defeated all those powers of the magicians in egypt he defeated all those amalekites and defeated all the pro all that a false prophet all that bela wanted to do and he turned the curse into a blessing yokes broken mountains removed problems solved and all the all the challenges of the people of god everything taken away 
because there is power authority unction anointing when you wait upon the lord wait upon the lord and then he'll bring it to pass Wait upon the Lord and it will bring it to pass. All the challenges in your life now, all the problems in your life now, yes, it will take everything away. Wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord, wait upon the Lord. The Lord is saying, He wants to answer your prayer. Come to God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And come with faith. Come with faith. Come with faith. Come with faith. And a determination, a decision that this problem will not remain. This challenge will not remain. This devil will not continue to chase me. You have peace in your life. You have victory in your life. You have authority in your life. You have rest of my peace of mind. You'll not just be roaming around, problem over problem, problem around problem every time. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. You have to stop the devil and stop the demons and stop those enemies harassing your life. There is power. There's authority. There is anointing. There is solution to every problem. If you will call upon the Lord, why should the devil make you a footmat? Why should the devil make you like a slave? Like the doors of the ground trampling over your life. Wait upon the Lord and get all these problems solved. Wait upon the Lord and get all these problems solved. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Renew your strength. Renew your strength. Turn your weakness into strength. And turn your crying into singing. Turn your doubts into faith. Turn your poverty into prosperity. Turn your life around. And don't allow the devil to be riding on your back. And moving in your body. Moving in your family. Don't allow all the things of the devil oppressing you, depressing you. And don't allow the devil just to run rampant in your life. Check him. And control him. And stop him. In his track. Call upon the Lord. And then he says, I'll show you great. And mighty things that you had never known. Call upon the Lord. I'll show you great and mighty things you have never known. Hold on to the promises of the Lord. Those promises are yes and amen in Christ. Those promises are yes and amen in Christ. And if you decide to fast, why not? If you decide to fast, why not? Because there's power in prayer and fasting. There's authority in prayer and fasting. Anointing, unction in prayer and fasting. This kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. And so make up your mind. Before you do too much of it, the answer will come. Before you go too far, the answer will come. Deliverance will come. The answer will come. Solution will come. The job will come. The breakthrough will come. The healing will come. The deliverance will come. The answer, great chance as miracle. The miracle will come. As we wait upon the Lord. Because he's a faithful God, he cannot fail. He's a faithful God, he cannot fail. He's a faithful God, he cannot fail. Yes, he'll do it. That's what he has said. That is what he has said. You are calling upon the Lord. You are telling the Lord, oh Lord, here am I. What if it will take just a day of fasting, two days of fasting, or three days of fasting? Why not? What you'll gain, what you'll get will be greater than those three days of self-denial. What you receive will be greater than those three days of fasting. What you receive, great things. Great miracle, great breakthrough will be greater than those three, four days of fasting. 
wait upon the Lord and receive something mighty, something miraculous, something like a breakthrough. That all those parts of darkness in your life, they'll be totally destroyed and crushed away from your life. Victory has come to you now. The Lord is showing you. The Lord is showing you now the way to victory. And the way to success. And the way to the breakthrough. And the way to the miracle. And the way to the anointing. And the way to the fruitfulness. And the way to the success. And the way to the conquering. And the way to the childbearing. And the way to the marriage. And the way to recover everything that you have lost. The way to have every sin that the Lord has promised unto you. The power of praying and fasting. The power of praying and fasting. The power of praying and fasting. Call upon the Lord and receive. Call upon the Lord and receive. Call upon the Lord and receive. He that believeth in me, the works I do shall do. And greater works than these shall he do. Because I go to the Father. He that believeth on me, he that believeth on me. Don't you believe? Don't you believe that God will never lie? Don't you believe that the promises are for you? Don't you believe you are a child of God? Don't you believe that I have only Father cares for his own? Don't you believe that he doesn't want you going about crying, shedding tears, and being sorrowful and suffering all through your life? Don't you believe? That the Lord loves you and He wants to solve your problem. Don't you believe He wants to He wants to take all those mountains away? Don't you believe that the Bible study tonight was just because of you? And the Lord Himself in His mighty power has given you this revelation so that the mountains of your life will not remain. Don't you believe that this is the day? This is the day. This is the period and the time of your breakthrough, of your healing, of your deliverance, of the provision of the Lord, of the mountain moving away from your life. Don't you believe? When Jesus Christ said, if you can only believe, if you can only believe, all things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible. All things are possible to him that believes. I'm sure you believe. I'm sure you believe. I'm sure you believe. And the Lord is saying, if you will do this, there will be no reason to keep on crying. There will be no reason to keep on suffering. There will be no reason to keep on having a shame, having that attack. There will be no reason to keep on in poverty and failure. If you can only believe, if you can only believe, all things are possible to him that believes. The promises are there for you today. 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 Victory has come. Victory has come. Power has come. Now the secret is revealed. The secret is revealed. You don't have to be weak anymore. You don't have to keep on suffering anymore. You don't have to keep on in sickness anymore. You don't have to keep to the yoke in your life anymore. You don't have to keep the burden in your life anymore. Mountains are going. Mountains are going. The mountains are going. And the Lord is saying, call upon me. Call upon me. Call upon me. Even those who do not know the Bible the way you know the Bible, they wait on the Lord and they pray. Even those who do not study as much as you have studied, they wait on the Lord and they pray. Even those who do not know the promises of God, even some people who are not born again, they fast and pray. How about you? You know the word. You are born again. You are sanctified. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Lord has revealed his mind and his secret unto you. Why will you not pray? Why will you not wait upon the Lord? If the people who do not know the truth, who do not have the promises of God, if they will wait upon the Lord and pray and fast, hey, about you, you know the truth, you know the truth, set the truth on fire in your life, so that this truth will work, and will work wonders in your life. Will work wonders in your life. Will work wonders in your life. There's no excuse now for any mountain to remain in your life. There's no excuse now for any problem to remain in your life. There's no excuse now for the devil to be tormenting you and oppressing you. 
There's no excuse now for any yoke, any burden, and any cause, and any seed coming from your forefathers. There's no excuse now for any seed to remain in your life. Now you have all the liberty to be victorious, to be successful, to be more than a conqueror in your life now. In Jesus' name we pray. Church, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Believers who believe in the power of God, I said in Jesus' name we pray. Say this after me. I don't have any excuse to be sick. I don't have any excuse to be depressed. I don't have an excuse to entertain mountain. I don't have an excuse to allow enemy to run over me. I don't have an excuse to be a failure. Mine is success. Mine is victory. Mine is healing. Mine is deliverance. No more tears. No more, no more sorrow no more yoke, no more yoke. now say this look at me i said say look at me tell the devil look at me tell your friends look at me i'm a demon chaser i'm a problem solver anywhere i go Mountains will move away. I am going back home now. I'm going with the power of God. Mountains get out of my way. Demons get out of my way. I see them running. I see them running. I see them running. Victory has come in your life in Jesus' name. Where are those anointed hands? Raise them up. Raise them up. You lay those hands on the sick and they shall recover. And if after this time, if you try to fast just, even just one day, there will be a channel, a tunnel from heaven. There will be a pipe running from heaven. And that pipe will be connected into your life. Power will flow into your life in Jesus' name. In every house fellowship, I declare deliverance. In every zone, I, de I declare deliverance. In every district, I declare victory. And when these people who are raising up their hands now, when you pray, the rain of miracle will fall from heaven. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you tonight because you have shown us a secret. The devil cannot overcome us anymore. Mountains will not stand in front of us anymore. Demons will not stand anymore. Sorcerers, witches will not stand anymore. Powers of darkness will not confront us anymore. I pray, oh Lord, your power, your victory will come to our lives in Jesus' name. Anoint the hands and the tongue and the lives of all these your children. And everywhere they go from today, victory will go with them. All the problems will clear out of their ways in Jesus' name. Barrenness, you don't have any right to be there anymore. I cancel that barrenness in Jesus' name. Lord, all the mountains confronting your people, I say unto their mountain, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray you wipe away their tears. Take away their sorrow. Take away their shame. And the victory that comes to the children of God will come to them in Jesus' name. Your failure is gone. Your defeat is gone. Your enemies are conquered. You go back home in the joy of the Lord in Jesus' name. 
from this day success victory healing deliverance the goodness of the lord will keep on following you in jesus name oh lord perform miracle in every life thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray